Hello, it's James Photography. I'm just going to do a very brief review on a little hidden gem that you might have. It's the Nikon 1.8G DX. Now, if you're on a crop sensor Nikon, I highly recommend getting this lens. It's a prime lens. Don't be fooled by the fact that it's cheap because it's only about £100. I got this for £95 years ago when I started off with crop sensor Nikons. Didn't really know much about primes and all that. I went straight to zooms and all that because I didn't really, you know, I was still learning. I didn't know how amazing the prime lenses are, especially this one. Um, so if you're on a crop sensor, this is the equivalent of a 50 mil, that's fine. You'll have yourself an amazing lens, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the image quality is amazing, the shallow depth of field and everything. Now when I moved over to full frame a few years ago, I started off with the Nikon D600 and worked my way up. Now I'm onto Nikon D750s. Um, I gave this to my wife because she's got an older crop sensor Nikon, so she's just been using it for her bits and bobs. And um, some of the shots she was pulling out, I was thinking, that's amazing, and it's just a rubbish old Nikon D70, cost her £35. Well, it, I got it because it needed a sensor clean. Um, so I had a look at this little lens. I mean, if you take the lens hood off, it's tiny, absolutely tiny. And when you put it on your camera, it weighs nothing, it's tiny. It's easy to travel with, it does, it's stubby as well, so it doesn't get banged and clattered by passers-by and things like that. But I was cleaning the back and I thought, that's pretty big, the uh, lens at the back, pretty big. It's pretty similar to the size of some of my full-frame lenses. So it's only in the last few months that I've been dabbling around with it, and I put it on my full-frame and I was really shocked. Um, it barely, barely vignettes at all. If you're at a wide aperture, like 1.8 or 2.8, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of vignetting at the end, just a little bit, not enough to worry about. You can correct a lot of it in post, or you just crop the image literally by about 5%. Not even that, you just shave off the edges just a little bit, and that vignette's gone. Now, if you drop down the aperture to quite a bit, say f16, f20, that sort of thing, then it will get tunnelly. You know, you'll have that tunnel thing. But this thing is so sharp, you can still crop, and you'll still have a really, really good image to use. But if you want the 35mm effect, Sort of on average, um, if it's a clear blue sky or a bright, uh, clear background, I'll have to crop it perhaps just a little bit. So I'm getting like a 37 mil or something like that from this little lens. Now, the image quality from this is absolutely astonishing. I had no idea. <laughs> and it's been sitting around for years collecting dust. I've never used it on full frame up until the last few months. The last few weddings that I've done, I've been using this a lot, an awful lot, and I'm gonna keep on using it. Um, because usually with weddings, the scene is quite cluttered, so a little bit of vignetting is not gonna make any difference at all, um, if it's, you know, lots of things going on. And some photographers actually add a vignette to draw you into the image a bit, so it does that anyway. So, um, but even if you do have to crop it a little bit, it's tiny, it's literally like a tiny little margin around the corners, and you can just get rid of that vignette if that's a problem. Now, I've never used the full frame version of this. It's a bit bigger and it's three times as much as well, about three to 400 pound, the uh, 1.8G FX. I've never used it. It's probably very good and fantastic, but the image quality from this, I've just got no interest in getting anything else. I'm just gonna use this and I'm quite happy with that little vignette and I use this for weddings a lot. Um, obviously, if it's a clear blue sky, I'm a little bit more cautious, but it's so sharp, it's so sharp, I just do not worry. And the autofocus is quiet, it's fine, it's good. So I use this a lot for the getting ready shots, for the dance floor shots. It locks on focus, no problem in low light. But it's the image quality from this. It really has that sort of, mm, you know, look, when you see the images, when you're going through all your pictures on Lightroom um, from a wedding, and I use five different lenses during a wedding, but I can always tell when it's this one, I can always tell. It's an absolutely fantastic, dreamy little lens with really sharp, great contrast. It's just great, I love it. So for a prime lens, for that real amazing image quality, um, I would either get this, if you're on a crop sensor Nikon, even if you've got an old NAF Nikon, it doesn't matter. The image quality from this will just make the pictures look amazing, okay? But if you're moving over to full frame, keep this lens. If you've got this lens, keep it it's a little hidden gem and the image quality from this is amazing and it's one of my favorite little lenses and I haven't used it for about two years because I just thought it was a crop sensor lens and I moved up to full frame so Nikon 1.8 G DX amazing lens hundred pound bargain okay so if you've got it keep it if you haven't got it get it thanks for watching Okay, so here's just a handful of pictures taken from the Nikon 35mm DX lens on a full frame camera, and these aren't cropped at all. Um, so I'm just gonna go through them. So great quality, as you can see. <clears throat> now I've used this lens on production shoots like this, 
this is for a cooking company and this one isn't cropped at all um, and the detail is fantastic the skin tone and everything uh, the getting ready shots I use it a lot um, during a wedding as the bride getting ready not cropped at all you can see a little bit of vignetting in the corners and here uh, look at the detail on her though the skin tone of that is a fantastic little prime lens it really is and you can see there's not a great deal of vignetting going on um, here you can see it a little bit more in the corner starting to creep in here and here but like I said it, if it doesn't remove it so well in Lightroom the anti vignette and you can just crop this just a little bit and get rid of that and uh, it's not a problem at all but great little lens uh, uncropped again this is Lauren um, a great model who's not a model you may have seen her on the mag mod video um, but in scenes like this it doesn't matter if there's a bit of vignette in at all does it because it's cluttered but um, I think it draws in the image a little bit as well it's quite nice I like it uh, the groom in a pub is quite dark in this pub quite low light so uh, yeah you can see the vignette in the corner but again doesn't matter nice colors this was just before he went in to the wedding um, now I did crop this image originally as a bridesmaid um, because there's a lot of empty space in this image but you can see in the corners uncropped uh, where the vignetting's pulling in so it's not drastic is it really it's not that bad for a supposed crop sensor lens on a full frame and I cropped this quite a bit quite a bit this original image originally and um, it was still really sharp it was fine there's the bridesmaids again you can see the vignetting but I don't mind it at all I don't mind it at all it just pulls in the image a bit uh, again you can see the vignetting but it just pulls in the image uh, it's just look at the little girl look at the skin tone the texture it's a fantastic little prime lens it really is I love this shot this is the bride and she was actually doing the hair of the bridesmaid <laughs> before the wedding <laughs> dance floor antics auto photo focus really good if you see over here this is how dark it was but I had speed lights up this end so um, it illuminated the place but it focused on this guy got the shot no problem now this one here, um, the original shot was straightened up and cropped just a little bit, but I think this is a good example of showing, because I think this was at f7.1, but if you see here, that's where the edge of the uh, lens mount finishes. So you can see how it can be sometimes, but again, a little bit of cropping, straightening up. Once you straighten this up, those corners just disappear, so it's not a problem. So you can see how much of the image is untouched by the vignetting. Uh, this dog here, and not cropped, I was doing a property shoot recently and they had this amazing dog so I took a photo of it um, and yep, great image, hardly any vignetting. This one here, I love this, I've got this printed on my wall, I was in Corfu in Greece and saw these two little old ladies having a natter on the side of the wall and I crept up and took a sneaky little shot but this was with the 35mm and a full frame camera, love it. Uh, this one here, you can see the vignette, and again, this was on holiday, some friends just mucking around, playing a game, you got to guess who the person is, and uh, this was indoor, low light, um, and I didn't feel the need to crop or get rid of the vignetting at all, because in this sort of environment, you don't really see it. Ah, uh, this recently, was in Bruges, I've got this printed very big on my wall, and a few people have actually got this print off of me, and they've liked it. It was in Bruges, it was a 30 second, second shutter exposure and this was with the crop sensor 35 mil and this is when it's printed big it is really sharp it's a i really like this image so i've got this one on my wall and that's it so just a few little examples of the 35 mil crop sensor lens on a full frame stonking little lens cheap as peanuts go get it